this is a uh, very uh, uh, very uh, interesting times that we are in right in terms of how do i prepare not from the process point of view i wanted to uh, kind of uh, get into how do i prepare my thinking towards this disruption and that is design thinking for us if i had to give you a quick uh, background of uh, where we started this journey of design thinking uh, several years ago probably 9 10 years ago borrowing from what uh, stanford did right uh, stanford's uh, d school did this as a process which is basically focusing on how do i solve a problem right it's basically a, a simple problem solving approach and is it something uh, completely new if you really go back and look at the uh, history of things uh, you, you would say really see that uh, there have been cases where people have used intuitively design thinking as an approach for solving problem decades ago as well right which is something that we have done a lot of research and we are still doing more and more as we go more and more we are unearthing more and more uh, examples of how design thinking existed several decades ago or even couple of centuries ago right so our journey started uh, with uh, uh, the stanford process when we brought it into intellect design arena several years ago polaris at that time and uh, yes as with any of the new things we kind of uh, quickly realized that uh, we, we were running into a lot of challenges i don't want to literally say failure but closer to that so we were sitting and wondering why is this not working something that stanford had put together uh, stanford is known to be somebody uh, who comes up with a lot of uh, innovative and new things that uh, people quickly adapt to world over and why is that we are not able to leverage that in an indian context and that is when we took a step back and looked at how do we contextualize it for the culture in the society we are in right which is where we always keep talking about the mindset right for us the mindset comes first before we get into applying any of those things correct so if you uh, have to look at what design thinking is right uh, you keep hearing several uh, different uh, versions in terms of definition and you will uh, quickly realize almost all of them are true in their own ways right in a simple uh, terms it is a problem solving approach which is uh, completely human centered by this uh, what do i mean by human centered the uh, we have always heard this saying that uh, customer in the middle uh, you know always keep customer customer is your god customer is the focus but design thinking as a process uh, helps in ensuring that you always keep remembering the customer it's always human centered so if i have to define uh, usage of design thinking for a problem situation it is not about the problem it's about the person who is facing the problem and the next one is future focused it is not about solving the problem for current situation it should be for the future and this is where we really have seen a lot of uh, benefits and success in wherever we have applied design thinking and later i'll take you through what are all the areas that are there are possibilities right in terms of applying design thinking it should be future focused it is not again uh, kind of doing a bandaid uh, uh, fix for a problem situation uh, and i i always keep giving this example i'm based out of chennai right uh, closer to uh, velicheri area for those of you maybe from there i always give this example of how a uh, few years ago when i used to drive through that road um, near the uh, hospital there right the kamachi hospital so um there there used to be a lot of traffic uh, congestion around the peak hours and somebody studied a lot of uh, data around what was going on and decided to construct a uh, flyover at that end and later i uh, noticed after the flyover has been constructed and there is a lot of traffic below the flyover what would have taken about 15 minutes to clear the traffic is taking little over 25 minutes now to clear the traffic so what happened right that's a classic situation of can uh, someone would have looked at 
design thinking is a problem solving approach and not just looked at data alone and uh, the third one is in terms of creating value it is not about just solving the problem how do i create value it is not about just finding an online solution for continuing my teaching to the students at this time how do i create value around what i am offering to the student i'm not talking about the subject but you are the channel that you are using your distribution channel right be it your zoom to whatsapp to uh, what not telecalls to continue the education so that's what design thinking is to keep it human centered future focused and create values having said this how do we ensure that we actually solve problems world over you will see examples of where lot of energy resources and of course money time effort spent on trying to solve a problem only to realize that the problem uh, is still existing or in some worst case scenarios compounded because of the solution we offered that for us is not having gone into the details of what the actual problem is and why there is a problem right we are traditionally we are uh, taught to come up with a solution the moment you hear a problem statement right you keep hearing right okay that's a problem give me the solution so in design thinking we are saying that's a problem take a step back and look at the problem again and again and again and see if we can peel some layers to see is that the actual problem i'll give you an example uh, this this is a real case uh, that happened in a tribal village in nepal several years ago the infant mortality was very high right the, basically the premature babies this is for the tribal population premature baby was very high right so they obviously what would you do when you look at a problem you start uh, looking at the data you analyze the data various slices and dices of data and then they realized okay premature babies are dying because they we don't have access to the incubator facilities for them so world over they spread the news a lot of uh, good hearted people started donating millions and millions of dollars for this and uh, they ended up uh, getting a lot of incubator equipments uh, equipped and then only to realize that either the infant mortality was still the same or it was increasing <clears throat> so they didn't know what went wrong they they analyzed the data then they realized wait a minute so we 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 thought we found the what the problem is and then we found the right solution the premature baby obviously need to be kept in the incubator machines so we got plenty of them and uh, we still at the same situation why so a group of students from howard landed up there and uh, interestingly enough they said uh, okay the data is good keep it we wanted to go to the village and be with a tribal village population so what they did is they went and started observing what was going on they started seeing what is happening they started understanding what is going on in the lives of uh, tribal women who are about to deliver and while the data showed n number of infants uh, didn't make it right their observation their observation included following the mother or the father once the baby is born premature they were carrying they were no transportation they were carrying the kids the newborn and they also realized shockingly there are many cases where the infant passed away few hundred meters from the hospital imagine the plight of the parents so they were 3 400 meters away from the hospital and they passed away so these kids observed all of these patterns as we call it and then came up with a solution saying that we need a simple solution where the baby has to be kept warm and by the way uh, this tribal village did not have a predictable stable electricity connection if you are wondering why the incubator machines were not moved to the village and they were kept in the hospital 
So these kids said, if the electricity is not available, what all we are going to do is come up with a simple design of a sleeping bag type of a large bag where you will fill that with hot water and wrap the baby around, which keeps the baby warm for a few hours for them to reach the hospital on time. Then you can put them on the equipment and save the baby. Within a few months, the mortality rate drastically reduced. Thanks to that very simple solution, right? So that 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 is what uh, for us design thinking is, right? And uh, we call those things that the uh, Harvard students attempted to solve a problem such as this is a hygiene factor, which is basically first it starts with listening. Are you listening to everything that is being said and not said also? It is not about just listening. It is about listening to everything, including the body language, including what the person who is facing the problem going through. Right? Which is where they realize the emotional trauma that the mother is going through, the father is going through 200 meters just before the hospital when they were losing the babies. So listening is a huge hygiene factor when it comes to design thinking. And uh, for, in academics, it's even more important and more powerful. How much are we listening to the things that the students raise, the students are asking? Many a times we'll realize that the best way to teach the students is for them to keep asking questions and for us to keep listening to them. Right? Remember, nobody is saying that as uh, teaching fraternity, we are supposed to have answers to every question. Right? Many, many an occasion you would have realized that we don't, and that's perfectly fine. Right? That's where the power of listening. I always say listening is one of the most important communication skills that one can actually develop, and it is not very difficult. You just have to be very mindful and conscious of listening. The next one is dialoguing. Right? Instead of just going with the data, dialogue with the person who's facing the problem. Dialogue with all of your stakeholders. If a student is running into a challenge, if you appear in the teaching fraternity is running into a challenge, what kind of dialogue do I have? Remember the difference between a dialogue and a debate, right? So debate is all about who's right. And dialogue is what is right. And what is right is what will help us to solve a problem, not who is right. And we have several, several, several examples, including in the current pandemic, one country versus another. One country is, could be approaching and what is right, and another country is approaching with who is right. And we see the end results, unfortunately. Right? So that's the next hygiene factor. The third, equally important, of course, all three are, is observation. The kids, when they went to the tribal village uh, in Nepal, they started observing. They just didn't go by the data. They started observing what is going on. What are the beliefs of the tribal people? What are the rituals they follow when the baby is born? Right? What are the things that are important for them? Of course, between listening, dialoguing, and observation, they were able to piece things together. And observation is, again, something we all do very selectively today, many of us. Right? Some of us, I'm sure, have mastered this. For example, I'll tell you, you are, uh, you are driving or you're traveling to your uh, work location, to your college, and it takes about uh, 7 to 10 kilometers to go. Right? On an average traffic, let's say it takes 45 minutes for you to go, a 10-kilometer distance. You've been going through that same road for the past 7, 8, or 9 years. Right? Up and down every day. And suddenly now you have decided you wanted to construct a new house. You bought a piece of land. Great, you're all excited. You want to construct a new house. And now the moment that thought has come into your mind, suddenly you start observing different types of house in the same road that you have been traveling the last eight years. Suddenly you start spotting, okay, I, I like that balcony there. Oh, I like that window structure that they have done. I like this design. I like that landscape. Those houses existed for a few years. It's just that you went past them without observing. So instead of uh, going into this mode of 
observing on need basis for design thinking to be successful you should make observing as one of your habits that's why we call all three of them as a hygiene factor what are examples of great design many the quick thing that comes to our mind is of course what uh, the great steve jobs has left for the world iphone right many other things yeah so uh, here here is one that we all know right whether we use it now or not at one point in time in our lives i'm sure we definitely used it for something or the other right and if you look at this design you'll be surprised that this is uh, this was what 1854 if i'm not mistaken and the design did not change the last 170 plus years of course people have improvised made it longer shorter different colors different material some had put a little uh, silicon or a rubber cushion around it so it is safe uh, to use uh, with the baby's uh, garments and what not but the fundamental design stayed the same such a simple design the idea is it doesn't have to be complicated it is just that we are under this pressure of the solution if somebody gives me a few lakhs to solve a problem necessarily it has to be complicated no and this is a classic example and of course close to home the mumbai dabba wala another classic example and it's a beautiful harvard case study where they came and studied because it beats all norms of six sigma by miles right when six sigma talks about uh, 3 or 3.4 or 3.5 errors per million dabba wallas are much 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 lesser again a very simple design for those of you who would have seen couple of paints couple of patterns couple of letters and a number there is a color that's painted to say from which district they are picking this up or from which zone that they are picking this up from there is a number that says which dabba wala is going to carry this there is an alphabet that says in which direction it goes another alphabet that says which office simple and they take less than 30 seconds to pick up the boxes from the house it reaches on time and those empty boxes comes back before the person comes back home such a beautiful design and for several several years have been delivered spotless right still people are baffled at uh, how the dabba walas and if you would realize their literacy level is very 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 low and uh, sometimes they even quote that it's probably one of the lowest in that kind of a sector still marvelous results because of simplicity in design so what are the elements of great design simplicity of course doesn't have to be complex simplicity it has to focus on the experience that the person goes through experience of the end user frictionless right there should not be challenges problems efficient of course right the bawala's classic example complexity reduction take the safety pin very simple right anybody could use it and above all one of the most important things when it comes to design thinking is questioning assumptions it is all about questioning assumptions why 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 should it be this way why should it be that way right if you are the uh, if somebody has to be given the project of coming up with a dabba wala equal and the first thing we will probably hear from them would be a barcode and a barcode reader let's take a barcode and we'll read the barcode but they just questioned all of those assumptions and finally empathy very key thing when it comes to problem solving remember i mentioned that design thinking is about uh, the person who's facing the problem and not the problem in itself therefore empathy becomes key right empathy becomes the overriding factor for everything so what all can be designed right we saw elements of uh, great design what all can be designed many things right we can design several things uh, 
there has always been uh, let, let's say uh, if you have popped this question in many of the workshops that we conduct right uh, be it for faculty or students or corporate there is always things like uh, yeah we can design a house we can design this we can design city we can design our health right design a country city singapore for those of you who stayed or traveled there you'll realize such a beautifully designed place there are several examples of countries like that i'm just giving singapore closer to home today as we speak they are coming up with the uh, another fifth metro line underground of course all their metros are underground they're coming up with the fifth one now with a thickly populated smaller country imagine coming up with a whole new metro line that runs across the coast right from one end to another it takes a lot of design so here are a couple of examples i wanted to share with you three examples to set our context uh, in terms of design one is a religion okay a uh, few centuries ago when the moguls were uh, invading and becoming very powerful in the northern part of the country the founder of sikhism said we have to take it on our hands to protect the motherland how do we do okay we are not as powerful as the moguls but we are going to build an army of our own people so i'm going to source one male member from each family and create this army of our own right of course they all volunteered many he brought in this thing of discipline so that's how you will see that uh, around even now in terms of say when serving public sit on the floor the uh, group dances to uh, attending to elders all of those discipline and come in to bring in humility at the same time strength then he realized right to make it viable so there is one part which is desirability for him to create an army of our own people it was feasible by bringing in the male from each family how do i make it viable so we win these wars he took the people and he rechristened their names right if you have param he said you are you will from now on be called param singh which is like you you fight like a lion and the end result should be jeet so that's how you will see many names param jeet singh by this he was able to work on the mindset of people right saying that you are going to fight like a lion you are going to win because you are so and so jeet singh and that is how he made it viable right why viability is important desirability feasibility is always there right if you look at a venn diagram of desirability feasibility and viability viability is the one that gives the experience and the end result otherwise take for example southern part of this country which is always hot hotter hottest if we fly down um, of course we have to wait till may to fly anywhere if you are to fly down to chennai if you peep through the window while landing you should see solar panels all over the place which you don't because people desire to use solar energy to save of course uh, being energy conscious environment conscious and of course cost conscious technically it's possible but it is not viable right it's still expensive maintenance to installation wise so the next one is uh, the devanagari script which is a language designed to use different parts of our mouth right some of the syllables will be using the lips some will be using the tongue some will be using the tongue touching the top of your jaw some will be using your throat this is a classic design of where it was designed to use different parts of our uh, mouth to make that sound and history also shows that uh, no religious uh, references whatsoever the rishis have found out by using these it also gives a healing effect for the body that is how the language is designed and that's a second example and to the southern part of the country right the south indian food system itself 
yeah so um, what happened in a time when there were no refrigerators we are in this tropical part of the area and we were all uh, looking at a few decades ago joint family right i've grown with a family of 13 people right and some of us would have had that experience as well so uh, the women of the house those days um, again no gender bias those days the men goes out to earn the bread and women takes care of the welfare of the house and the people right so they were uh, given this uh, daunting task of keep cooking for the family and how do you make it very nutritious so uh, when it comes to let's say uh, one of the staple food rice so they have taken uh, three parts of rice and one part of urad dal mix it so that gives you enough carbs enough starch uh, gives you enough protein iron what not right soak it make a batter let it ferment overnight the next day they make a nice idli out of it and remember these are the days when there were no refrigerator which means the fermentation process continues every day so it's left outside the next day the second day it becomes even more fermented right and if you make idli on the second day for those of you who are a big big fan of idli or dosa you will know idli made out of over fermented uh, batter will be harder right the first day idli is the softest so then they went with dosa for day 2 and uh, again dosa made out of a fresh batter versus a uh, well fermented batter you can quickly find out because in some restaurants we go we know it's made out of fresh batter that's day 2 day 3 remember the fermentation process continues it's a huge family they always make a lot and day 3 they make uthappam garnish it to offset the pungent uh, uh, effect they garnish it with a little bit of onions and tomatoes so that in our research we found out is how design thinking has been used to a empathize with the Uh, women of the family who heads the welfare of the people in the family and this also you know if you roughly calculate even if it takes 2 hours the uh, saving time that's 2 hours into even if you take 5 uh, lakh women you know the math now right 10 lakh hours saved to focus on something else so that is how this design has been done and the classic example out of this or this example gives a classic thing of how did they leverage that constraint which was the weather condition which was making the batter ferment keep fermenting continue fermenting that's one of the things about design thinking is the moment we see constraints a question we should come up with is how do i leverage that constraint the success depends on identifying the constraint of course then leveraging the constraints not thinking of constraint as a roadblock and drop this whole thing and move in another direction for a solution if they have done that probably uh, it's a wild guess that we may not have seen dosa for a very long time they decided to leverage the constraint outside of this for the those of the cricket, uh, big cricket fans mutheya murali dharan he had an elbow challenge people thought that uh, he can never be a cricketer and he said wait a minute that's my physical challenge that i have i'm going to leverage that challenge that i have in my elbow right let alone few unfortunate controversies created but when he retired he was one of the best that the cricket world has ever seen as a great bowler right because he leveraged that constraint so world over you will see lot of examples of how do i leverage that constraint to come up with a beautiful design that will be sustainable that and that will not just solve the problem it adds value to the solution that i create and to us that is this approach right in terms of uh, you know if you have to look at understanding the stated and the unstated requirements right we had seen some of these earlier stated requirements by your uh, customers end users in this case your students or your management as well stated requirements are easy 
how do i look at the unstated requirements because your future focused solution and adding value depends on identifying the unstated requirements there are several several examples i recently bumped into an example of where a government decided to construct houses for a again a remote tribal village i think it was in chatisgarh if i'm not mistaken right nice very small houses because they were all dislocated no good houses so we said we are going to give them that comfort lot of money pumped in constructed the houses tribal people didn't use it why for them so the somebody who architected this came up with a very good architecture they decided to save cost by not having a door at the back of the house you know how in an individual house front door and the back door apparently in that tribal population when the baby is born people enter and exit through the back door otherwise it's a bad omen right so people said no this doesn't suit ours it is very clear for our culture and belief you need to have that back door that was unstated requirement that they missed and you will see as you go through if you keep researching you will see examples of great design the classic example of iphone itself nobody put a gun into the head of steve jobs or apple organization and say come up with an iphone he looked at the unstated requirement as the history shows and the research has given us enough uh, stories of what went through the minds of steve jobs is when he looked at uh, people traveling on vacation people were carrying a digital camera on their neck a address book a phone a music system and you go to a restaurant you come back you are checking okay my music system is here where is my oh my god I'll, i forgot my address book there i had to go and pick it up so i said why can't i just put them all together people seem to use this and why can't i put them all together and the other unstated requirement is we all we, many of us who have used that good old nokia or the samsung brick phone right the nokia brick phone where the screen size is a tiny little square the keyboard was twice the size of the screen and uh, steve jobs asked this question why do we need a keyboard get rid of the keyboard at the very same time blackberry was trying to add additional key to their keypad saying that one touch of a key you'll be able to open the mail directly you don't have to shift through two three layers of menu to open the mail he said get rid of the keyboard that was unstated requirement today we don't even many don't even want to touch a phone that has a keypad right so that's that's looking at unstated requirements observing patterns and anti patterns right patterns are things that are going well right anti patterns are things that fail okay so uh, i i gave you an example of the nepal case study in terms of patterns uh, that they observe right um, and the third one is uh, connecting the dots within the box and outside what we are saying here is when you are trying to solve a problem you don't have to necessarily look at it within your domain only by that i mean the moment we say there is a problem in the way we are delivering classes the first thing we'll do is okay let me look at what is the what are the other universities are doing fine that is great no denying that that's the quickest approach but if you start connecting the dots outside of your domain okay how are the other places teaching or how are the let's say how are corporates that are worldwide or how is mcdonald's training the people there are mcdonald's across the world right and there is a central mcdonald's university in the us how is that happening and that to a very consistent teaching and that's what we are talking about connecting outside the box within the box is good which is within our domain outside the box is equally important and that's where you have seen lot of disruptive thinking have come for example uh, we all know about arvind ikea right many of you would know for uh, those of you who may not is a very uh, famous 
eye care hospital from south started by uh, dr govinda pa venkata swami after his retirement his uh, the unstated requirement again going back to the point of unstated requirement he looked at saying there are many elderly people who go blind that can be avoided because they cannot afford cataract surgery or the replacement lens at that time a replacement lens costed anywhere from 3 to 500 us dollars I'm talking about a couple of decades ago right unaffordable even in today's standards not affordable for many part of the population and he said i wanted to reduce the cost to less than 5 dollars and i want to reach to at least 50 to 100 countries because i can stop this blindness this is not a disease i wanted to stop that that's a purpose that he was driven by and you'll be surprised where he asked lord of us he had all these top notch consultants he said guys i need to scale i need to scale i need to scale huge numbers and they were saying okay look at this eye hospital look at that hospital in here us this hospital in uk that hospital in singapore what not he said all that is fine again i'm taking a flight going down to uh, california why he said i wanted to learn how mcdonalds operates and everybody laughed at him many people including his consultants but he said no i wanted to learn from mcdonalds because they have mastered the art of scaling with predictable results and consistency those of you who have gone to mcdonalds in different places you will notice that it's the same across the globe the way it looks the way they serve the way the seating the way the menu is the way they make the burgers to fries to what and part of the success good part of the success of uh, arvind i care goes to uh, dr uh, venkata swami studying mcdonalds model connecting outside the box and finally unearthing the blind spots and unearthing the blind spots blind spots are clearly i don't know what i don't know if you ask somebody what is the problem they'll say only the problem that they are facing right now they will not say what they don't know that that is the problem right so this is where you will see the blind spots is where you will see you have solved a problem but the problem still exists because you missed unearthing that blind spot classic example uh, gillette when it was uh, launched in india the first time a uh, couple of decades ago two three decades probably they came and did a beautiful market study they said okay great guys lot of indians love to shake right and we are going to launch this product we are going to come home with truck load of money great they pumped in lot of dollars they collected data the data data after data after data they came up with the design right they they of course with all due credit to them they came up with the design specifically for indian population right because uh, asian hair texture and all of that is different and suddenly somebody said okay we need to test this thing we have pilot product we need to test and someone uh, very smartly said okay let's test it with the indians in the us and canada why take it all the way to india because it's uh, it's a hair texture right and this indian so it should be fine and people said yeah brilliant they tested everything was fine they launched great and they fake miserable why then they realized uh, for those of you who have seen your uh, either father or grandfather going through this process of shaving right that's an episode for them little cup of water right in a small mug those days i've seen my dad do this every day right so many of you a mug where they use that single edge seven o'clock blade they dip it in the water because we are very frugal about water not that the availability was a problem but we were always very frugal we don't want to waste things and that was a huge blind spot why when they tested it in the us people were using running water to clean the blade during the shave so when what happened was gillette sent about 1000 plus people across the country and said go to every corner of the town villages and see what's going on when people shave that's when they realized these things they also realized 
that it is a joint family the male of the house will have to get up early in the morning so they get access to the bathroom area to shave which means most of many of the times they may end up shaving in dark which means the blade that they had come up with was not safe enough so they went back to the whiteboard and designed and came back with this uh, uh, twin blades or what not and the uh, rest we know history there was no looking back for gillet but the problem was they missed the blind spots because they made assumptions right going back to again questioning assumptions they made assumptions if it is this then it is same with the indians there as well right so if you look at any of these things and i talked about the constraint as well the point that i wanted to leave with you uh, while we are discussing this topic is many of us saw use of gadget or even the students carrying the gadget to colleges as a big constraint we did a an interactive session our chairman mr arun jain uh, founder of intellect design arena uh, he had an interaction with a uh, few of the faculties long time back about 100 of them and uh, many of them were saying what is the big problem students are distracted by mobile phone right even at that time we were thinking uh, how do we leverage the constraints right and uh, if you look at it that's a very constraint that we all thought is what is saving the day for us today the gadgets are very gadgets that we thought were a constraint is the one that is saving the day for us today which is ensuring continuity of teaching right so that is leveraging the constraints to any of these things as unstated requirements or anti patterns or thinking outside the box or identifying the blind spots right so what is design and I'll, i just talked about it it is mainly about the functional and aesthetic requirements and i'll go to the next one to quickly point your attention to the third one where there has always been a question of okay we have heard of different thinkings right the, we have heard of critical thinking we have heard of uh, lateral thinking we have heard of this and that what is this new about design thinking so critical thinking is breaking down the ideas design thinking is building up on the ideas and there are no judgments in design thinking any idea is a good idea one of the important tools of design thinking is brainstorming right any idea is a good idea wild ideas are welcome there are times that people have given very very wild ideas but the beauty is the wild idea would when you start building up may actually lead you to a good solution quickly to demystify between traditional thinking and design thinking of course after they after you go back from this session when people ask you what is it uh, that design thinking is so different from others you should be acute right so we thought we'll leave you with this quick thing and by the way just a note of caution uh, what i'm sharing with you for this hour is a condensed version of something that we do either for two days or three days right <coughs> excuse me so that's why i'm kind of rushing through some of these things so in a traditional thinking when you see a problem the first thing is what is the right answer we have heard this right okay this is the problem guys what's the solution what's the answer to this problem in design thinking it's about what is the right question you keep asking one question after another one question after another one question after another it is about peeling one layer after another to see what is the problem right why that is a problem they always say data which i kept mentioning about data data is something that tell you what the problem is but design thinking will tell you why there is a problem for that we have a tool that we apply called uh, five why for some of you who follow the toyota process you would know right we keep asking when you are, when you see a problem a statement you keep asking a why on top of that problem statement an answer will come up you ask another why on top of the second answer another third answer will come up right for example i'll take you for uh, some of you in the mechanical engineering things we have seen uh, the uh, welding floor right in a manufacturing shop where there is a welding uh, floor 
strict rules, right? Wear the gear, protect your face, protect your hands, gloves, and all that. In one occasion, they were consistently seeing a lady okay, not wearing the gear. She has been told, wear the gear, you're getting hurt. She didn't. In a traditional thinking way, what would be the right answer for the solution? I mean, for this problem? They will say, okay, we are going to penalize the person. He's not wearing the gear in spite of our policy, our rule that says. When you apply design thinking, you start asking these questions one after another. First, you apply the first why. Why is this person not wearing the protective gear? Because she's finding it hot. Why is he finding it hot? Because the air conditioner is not working. Why is the air conditioner not working? Because our three three phase connection is completely unstable. So when you ask the right question, the problem is not the person not wearing the protective gear. It is the organization that did not ensure that the three phase connection is stable. Right. So that is the beauty of asking questions. Traditional thinking is more talk. Design thinking is more about listening. Again, it is not a very difficult thing, friends. It's a simple thing. You have to be just mindful because we are all in a hurry to show that we have the answer. We are all in a hurry to prove that I know it. In many times, we don't even listen to that person because we are rehearsing our answer. And when, uh, when is this person going to stop? So I'll jump in and tell you what, my, what I'm thinking. But in design thinking, listening is very important. Data, as I said, traditional thinking, go with the data. Design thinking, go with the stories. Data showed n number of percentage of infants died because of prematurely born. Story showed good number of them died 100, 200, 300 meters before reaching the hospital. That gives you a different lead for a solution not just the data next is events which is traditional thinking way clearly events design thinking way is all about experiences right what is the end user experiencing in your case what is the experience that the students are going through right now right but what is the experience that the person using a Gillette blade is going through? And traditional thinking is all about facts. We keep hearing that, right? In uh, management meetings, you would have heard, give me the facts, give me the data, give me the facts, what's the right answer? I need to know the facts now. Design thinking is about feelings. What is the feeling that the person is going through right now? Right. So if you look at between asking the right questions to listening to stories, experiences and feeling, you will be guaranteed to go in a direction which will end up giving you a good, very good solution to the actual problem, if I can say. Right. So that that is. Uh, uh, the difference between traditional thinking and design thinking, right? And uh, what we do differently, I did mention that uh, the beginning that uh, we did uh, run into a lot of challenges when we started applying design thinking. And we kind of tweaked it, made it uh, culturally uh, or society uh, based or culture based uh, tweaking that we have done to make it contextual, but for this part of the globe, it's a one simple thing. Design thinking assumes that you don't follow hierarchy, which is easier said than done because structurally there are hierarchies. There has to be hierarchy. But how do we bring in the situation where hierarchy is not felt when you are applying at least design? Thinking? Correct. So which is where we are different and uh, what we rechristened this whole thing as redesigned rather the whole approach as design the thinking. Right. Working on the mindset, the, all the elements that I talked to you about is all about the mindset, right? How do I focus myself on capturing the stories and the feelings? How do I even develop the approach based on empathy towards the end user? 
there are one or two huge big big tier one organization in the country and obviously i will not name the organization went on to uh, train their employees on design thinking process which is fair in 3 months they covered the entire population and uh, suddenly they ran into challenge to an extent that the board asked the ceo what went wrong in the next 6 to 9 months because their revenue plummeted the delivery was taking a hit because if you look at especially uh, engineering mind it's more analytical right for an engineering mind uh, we saw a number 3000 plus a number a number of you joining the session right for an engineering mind sitting and talking today would be 3000 plus participants or data points for me in this session for a design thinking mind it would be 3000 plus academic leaders for connecting it to their real time problem right now and that's a huge shift in the focus that shift will happen only when you prepare the mind first because we all have our own set of beliefs and sometimes limiting beliefs and we have our own set of conflicts in our head about our own perspectives the fear sometimes doubt sometimes and how do we work on those so which is what our focus is on design the thinking first we have what is called 13 musical notes that we focus on design the thinking first then the process becomes much easier as much as design thinking is referred to as the next wave as tqm tqm is more as just pure process here it is about the people the empathy my mindset and then the process right so it's about what it says at the bottom the ability to change our viewpoint from our own to that of the user how do we really get into the shoes of the user literally be the end user and feel the pain that they feel so that has been our focus and i i talked about shifting the focus right in your situation when this entire pandemic came in there are some universities some colleges in india some schools in india and some in the western world and the eastern as well quickly jump to online learning right keep the technology part out for them they shifted the focus of teaching in a classroom to enabling learning so for you the same thing because this disruption has provided a huge opportunity for you friends this is changing the way you are going to teach in the future this is changing the way your role is going to be in the future i'm not saying your role is redundant never i'm a strong believer i've been associated with academics for many many years as a passion never you are the expert the channel in which you deliver is going to change online through whatever digital media the way you interact with the students is going to change the way the students learn is going to change the way you interact with your peers are going to change for the better so therefore shifting that we call it shifting the dot from one point to another shift the dot from classroom teaching to learning classroom may end up becoming just one medium i'll give you a quick example uh, we are running out of time so i'll give you a very quick example several years ago when uh, honda was uh, looking at uh, fuel efficiency they started the fuel efficiency war arguably and quickly they realized uh, you know that's a glass ceiling what will you do in a car 18 kilometers a liter 20 kilometers 25 28 30 you can't say i'll give you 200 kilometers a liter we know it's a glass ceiling in a brainstorming session one of the engineers shifted the talk he asked a question is that fuel efficiency that we want to focus on or energy efficiency because fuel is also an energy the moment the dot was shifted from fuel efficiency to energy efficiency boom they came up with hybrid engine they came up with the multi cylinder and the technology to decide 
how do i fire less cylinders when i am in the city and more cylinders when i am cruising through the highway at 100 miles an hour and how do i recycle the exhaust energy because the dot shifted from fuel to energy same way my recommendation to you is shift the dot your focus from classroom teaching and teaching to learning i think that's going to transform the way we all will function in the future right just to give you a gist of what uh, we do of course uh, academics corporates we work with students and uh, we work with a lot of uh, government departments and ngos okay this is in no means saying that uh, this is not a sales pitch whatsoever this is to clearly say how design thinking is applicable everywhere right design thinking is applicable for example uh, with uh, ngos with villages with panchayat we are applying design thinking to shift the image of a panchayat again the focus a panchayat leader in places that we have worked with they say i am an elected leader therefore i have to follow certain things we shifted the focus from elected leader to ceo of the panchayat the moment you put on the hat of a ceo of the panchayat the whole ball game changes now they are talking about i need to have a budget i need to have a business plan i need to have a hr for me i need to have a resource plan phenomenal out that is where friends uh, design thinking becomes a huge differentiator and applicable in all walks of life right it is not about just one or two or three areas any area you look at especially in academics there is a lot that is in front of you i think it's up to us to take charge like i said shift the dot from one to another apply some of the elements of design thinking there and i'm sure you're going to find this journey absolutely exciting thrilling and enjoyable especially given this disruption that we are going through okay so uh, that's all i had to uh, share thank you doctor thank you thank you thank you all thank you doctor thank you